Hello, my name is Mel, welcome to my world. And if you're new to my channel, normally at this point, I would say I'm currently building an off-grid, go anywhere, sleep anywhere, camper van. But today, I'm gonna to give you a van tour. It's a van tour you've all been waiting for. Now, this is my van, it's a full transit. It's 2008, it's a trend. Therefore, it's got cruise control, it's got air con. Not only that, it's got a heated front screen, heated mirrors, electric, um, not electric, <laughs> they're all electric, wipers, automatic wipers, and automatic headlights as well. <laughs> And from the outside, it looks just like any other full transit, apart from it's not white, it's silver. So let's have a look on the inside. <laughs> I messed that right up, didn't I? Never mind, it'll have to do. <laughs> now inside, it's a completely different story. It actually looks like a camper van. There you go, check that out. Got my bed up the back now. Now it's a nice high bed, which means around the back, I've got a nice garage area of loads of room for loads of stuff. Um, under the bench, I've got my uh, fridge down there, as you can see, and I've also got my toilet there, my little porta potty. Now, fortunately, I've never used the porta potty, but it is there just in case for those um, odd emergencies or those emergencies that may occur. So, yeah, luckily, I've not used it yet. Now, next to my toilet, you'll see there is a gas alarm. Now, that gas alarm is pretty mandatory in a van, especially if you've got gas. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I've got gas in more ways than one, I can tell you. <laughs> right, so, yeah, enough of that. <laughs> but it's there anyway, my gas alarm's there. It is um, isolated, I've got a switch where I can turn it off. Now, to remind myself to turn it on, the charges at the back there, I've got a little charge socket there and a light, a nighttime light, is also wired to the gas alarm. Therefore, if I get in bed and I want to charge my phone up, if my phone doesn't charge, I know I've forgotten to turn my alarm on. So that's why I've done it like that. Safety, it's all about safety. Now that's one of my mottos, keep it simple, keep it safe. And that's a, that's, I've always lived by that. And talking to safety as well, I've got a smoke alarm up there and um, I did have a uh, CO2 alarm, whatever they call them. Sorry, not CO2, carbon monoxide uh, alarm. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, that's gone. I don't know where it went. <laughs> it's lost <laughs> somehow. How'd you lose a CO2 alarm? I don't know. But I've got to get another one. I'm talking about alarms. Um, there's also a fire extinguisher there. So that's safety covered. <laughs> right, let's get on with the nitty gritty, shall we? Let's get inside and I'll show you my sink. But before I do that, let's turn some lights on. Let's cover me lights. So I've got a light up here. Um, that's independently wired. Normally that would be facing down towards the sink. So I've got, when I'm cooking, I can put the spotlight on. I'll show you my sink in a minute. My light, main light switch is here. There's two lights there, independent. I've got four lights, two at the front and two at the back. And they're switched independently, so I can turn them on. Oh, full one. So I can turn the lights on independently if I want to. Um, and to be, be honest with you, I've, I don't really have all four on at the same time. Just these two at the front and that one up there does fine. And like I mentioned earlier, I've also got a little light right at the back. Yeah, up against my crooked picture. <laughs> my picture's falling off the wall. That's not good, is it? <laughs> right, whilst I'm at this angle, I'll show you my cupboards while I'm here. So under the bed, I've got these nice big cupboards as well at the front. Um, as you can see, uh, yeah, all my bits and bobs go in there. Another cupboard there as well. And that, that goes quite a way back. Um, now, I did make these cupboards specifically deep enough for these uh, plastic, cup, uh, plastic containers that you get from B&Qs. So yeah, they're pretty good. And now my bench, lifts up and my fridge is under there like that so I can sit here and then get have access to my fridge. So I'm sitting there, nice sunny day, lift my lid up, grab a cold one, no problem whatsoever. I don't even have to get up. And another good thing about having this set up is, excuse the table leg, this is the, the table goes up here. I'll show you that in a minute. So when I'm sitting here, I've got my fridge that side of me and my cooker this side of me. Um, I'll show you that. There you go. I've got one single gas ring there. We running water. And in the back, I've got. I think it's a 15 litre water tank for me fresh water. That's all I need. Does me fine. I just rest my hand up there. My arm's starting to ache already. <laughs> right, so I'm doing this as quick as I can. 
make sure I make holding the camera out like this. Now you may be thinking, why have I only got one gas ring? Well, that's all I really need, one gas ring for when I wake up in the morning, make myself a coffee, that's all I do. But on the odd occasion that I do want to cook a gourmet meal, I do have, tucked away under the sink, I've got a, um, a full cooker stove there. I'll just grab that out of there if I can, one-handed. It's held in with a bungee cord. Good old bungee straps, eh? Where would, what would we do without them? Oh, I'm, getting out. I'm trying to do this all in one take, so I don't have to do any editing later on. So that goes there. Let's move that crap over there. Now up here, next to my sink, I've got this gas valve, really nifty this. It's a quick release gas valve, and I've got a little cover on it. This cover actually comes, it's a foot off of a dryer. You know these dryer, these collapsible clothes dryers you get? It's actually the foot off of one of them. Look, <laughs> and it fits perfect on this um, gas valve because these don't actually come with a cover. So there's a little tip for you. <laughs> don't get into trouble nicking someone's foot off of their dryer. So this cooker then goes up there like that. I won't plug it in because it's pretty impossible to do it one-handed. You get the picture, right? And there you go. I've now got two rings and a grill. And I do use this grill, um, especially when I want a bit of toast. You know, it's nothing like, nothing quite like beans on toast, is there? Let's face it. We've all got to have beans on toast now and again. So that fits there, lovely and neat. And then when I finish, I simply pop that off and stick it back under the sink. Obviously once it's cooled down and it's been cleaned. Now my bed is an eight foot, um, not eight foot, <laughs> eight inch memory foam mattress. I'll tell you what, it is really, really comfortable. If you're building a van, don't cheap out on your mattress. Don't get one of these little thin mattresses. Go for something like this, it is absolutely, I mean, it's, it's the best night's sleep I've ever had in this van. Um, it is a standard double bed, uh, which is, I think is six foot, six and a half foot by four foot deep. But because of the, 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 the width of the van, I've had to cut it down. So it's about just over five foot across this way and four foot deep, which doesn't apply to the DVLA regulations. So for that purpose, I use my table, this table leg swings around, table fits on there. Originally I did have a slide out, but I realised my table actually comes level with this. Then I put cushions on top of that and it makes it six foot deep that way. Does that make sense? Let me get the table and I'll show you. Now the table goes against the bulkhead on these nifty little clips. And I've got these from clear Clear cut van conversions. They're a company, I think they're on eBay and Amazon, and they do loads of stuff, loads of little bits and bobs that are really hard to come by. Yeah, I recommend them. I think I'll get most of my stuff from them actually, <laughs> thinking about it. So I just end the table leg. It goes in there like that. Sorry about that. So there you go, now my bed is six foot across. All I do is simply put a cushion on there. Um, these two big cushions that I've got at the back, um, I think I put those on top of each other. They go where my cooker is at the moment. Then I've got the, the off cut from the mattress, the bit that I actually cut off of the mattress, I've made it into a big square piece and that fits on top of there. So my bed is now six foot across that way. I've never used it like that yet. <laughs> I've always slept corner to corner, but it's there if need be, uh, just to satisfy the DVLA as it were. So yeah, that's me bed sorted out. I must sort that picture out, it's gone a bit crooked. <laughs> now you might have noticed my fan, my ceiling fan. I love this thing, it's brilliant, it really is. Um, it can either blow or suck, and you can control the speed on it. It's even got temperature on it, so you can preset it to what temperature you want. Not that I've ever actually used that feature yet. I've not used it to its full advantage just yet because it's not summer yet, not quite summer. But yeah, I'm looking forward to trying that out. Now, in conjunction with this fan, I've also got at the front, um, I'll show you, spin you around. As you can see, I've got these wind deflectors. So at night, I can have my window open about two inches 
And from the outside, they don't look like they're open because of these wind deflectors. And that gives me a nice free flowing air circulation through the van. Absolutely brilliant, I love it. But obviously the bulkhead has to be open for that to work. But I've got no problem sleeping with that bulkhead open. Um, it's probably best to sleep with this open anyway so you can look out the window. People can't see in at night, it's just too dark in here. But for privacy, if ever I do want a bit of privacy, oh, I can do this one-handed, I simply lift this up. And this is insulated as well, it's got a uh, 25 mil uh, foam, like just normal polystyrene foam. So that's really insulated, so during the day it stops the heat coming into the van from the cab and at night, um, in the winter, it stops the heat getting lost out through the cab as well. And also it's, it acts as a, um, yeah, just insulates the van. <laughs> and for, for the uh, sliding door, to cover this window up, I've got a curtain that goes across, right across the length of the door. So at night, it does get really dark in here. You can have it really dark and it's really perfect for those afternoon naps as well, <laughs> because, <laughs> Yeah, and this curtain goes from the top, like literally from the ceiling to the floor, right down. So any drafts from the door, and these doors do get a bit drafty, so they never seal properly at the end of the day. Um, and that curtain cuts out all the drafts. Let's open it up again, it's a bit dark in here, it's shut. So that's what I do at night, I can slide that up, pull my curtain across, and yeah, there's no light at all escaping from the van, nobody knows you're in here. 100% stealthy, which is what we want. We want to be able to park anywhere, especially those car parks where it says no overnight camping. <laughs> I mean, it's just a van, right? So, and I've got away with it loads of times as well, trust me. It's really worth keeping your van looking like just a normal van, just for that reason. Don't go putting stickers all over it and advertising the fact that your van is a camper. I mean, yeah, you're better off staying stealthy. Now my electrical panel, some of you might have noticed, that's my solar uh, controller there, that controls the solar panel on the roof. Now I've only got a 100 watt solar panel, because that's all I need really, because I've got a split charge relay, and it's a voltage sensing split charge relay, <laughs> try saying that when you're drunk. So when I'm driving, that charges my leisure battery that's in the back, and I've only got a small leisure battery, I don't use a lot of power, and most of the charging I do, is during the day as well when the sun's on, sun's on, <laughs> when the sun's up, a 100 watt solar panel is more than enough to charge my phone, charge my laptop, my Kindle, uh, yeah and I've just bought a MacBook Air, no it's not, it's a MacBook Pro, sorry, I don't know if that'll charge in here or not, uh, we'll have to wait and see, I've, I've, I've got to do some experiments with that as far as that's concerned, but I've only just bought it, quite looking forward to using that and I've brought that um, purely for video editing, because my old laptop's just rubbish, it's so slow. But anyway, going off on one, you want to know about my van, don't you, not my laptop. <laughs> right, uh, what else, I think I've covered it all inside. Yeah, there's my cupboards, oh, gas bottle. My gas bottle is in this cupboard in the corner here, it's just in there, that opens up, can't get to it now, it's totally in the way. Oh, knob, hang on. It's impossible to do this one-handed. <laughs> There you go, let's just chuck that up there for now. That's it. Right, so my gas ball is simply in this little cupboard here. Probably a load of crap in there. <laughs> just take my word for it, my gas bottle's down under there. <laughs> I'll take all this out to show you. You all know what a gas bottle looks like, right? So that's the gas bottle in that cupboard, and yeah, my gas alarm there, so it's all in one place. And that is vented as well, that cupboard. It's vented out to outside the van. Ah, talking about outside the van. My sink also is, um, <laughs> edit that bit out. My sink, the waste water from my sink goes straight out the bottom of the van. Um, I don't really have a grey water tank, but for those rare occasions that I'm in a sensitive area, like a mate's driveway, for instance. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit rude, isn't it? Leaving toothpaste on your mate's driveway. I've got, a, I've got a water tank here, then I can pull that pipe out and put it in that tank. But for most of the part, the tank um, isn't used. The water just runs straight out the bottom of the van, which is fine. I've got no problem with doing that. But like I say, <laughs> if I'm in a sensitive area, uh, it's a bit rude to leave toothpaste on your mate's driveway, right? <laughs> right. 
So let's go around the front and I'll show you inside the van, inside the cab, and I'll show you outside the back as well in the boot. So before I take you around the back, I thought I'd show you my drawers. <laughs> that sound right, does it? <laughs> right, so this van's got three drawers. There are two quite narrow ones, quite shallow at the top. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> This one's full of my junk. It's got selfie sticks, lights, an inverter. I'll use that inverter to charge my uh, metal detector. But we won't go, won't go into that. Um, this drawer's got me pots and pans, cups, cutlery, all that good stuff. And pretty much the same in the bottom one as well. Just bits and pieces. Uh, frying pan, pots and pans, van essential, coffee mate. Actually, I might put kettle on in a minute. Now I've got, uh, yeah, just general stuff in there. It's nice and deep as well, so I can get loads in that. Originally, I thought I was going to use that drawer for me uh, dirty laundry, but um, me dirty laundry, I'll shove up in the top cupboard there. <laughs> Underneath there, I've got me a little cubby hole for me shoes, and next to that, me nighttime heater outlet. Now, the nighttime heater is actually at the back of here. I don't know if you can see, but there's, you won't be able to see it, but it's behind that board there. So, the whole point is the heater if it did go wrong i can get i can get to it by taking these drawers out by taking all these four three drawers out take them off their runners i've got access to that heater now i do recommend if you've got one of these chinese heaters just run it on full all the time just run it on like set it to 20 and just run it full if you run it low on a low temperature they do tend to soot up and you will have to take them out and take them apart and for that reason i've got my temperature controller there and I basically just use that as an on-off switch. I'll switch it on, and when it's warm enough, I'll switch it off. Simple as that. All this malarkey about turning the temperature up, turning the temperature down, no, I'll just switch it on and off. It don't take long to warm it up in here. And once it's warm, generally it stays warm as well. You don't need to have it running, if you know what I mean. And I certainly can't sleep at night with it running. <laughs> just too noisy. So anyway, that's the, I think that about covers the inside of the van. Um, there you go, and have a look for you. <laughs> yeah, I think that just about covers it. So, right, let's go around the back and have a look what's in the boot. So, in the boot of the van, it is massive, with loads of room in the boot under the bed. Because remember, it's a, it's a six foot like double bed at the end of the day, and the whole neat underneath of it is storage. There you go, look at that, loads of room, plenty of room under there for awnings, uh, deck chairs yeah deck chairs <laughs> tables all sorts um metal detector shovels spades all that good stuff big wellies <laughs> me wet suits <laughs> anyway the list goes on and it all fits now there's my water tank this is um was it 15 litres it's a 15 litre fresh water tank there and next to it i've got a little 10 more, 10 litre water tank so in total, I've got about 25 litres of water, which is plenty. And behind that, you can just about see behind there, amongst all the crap, <laughs> is my leisure battery. And it's only 100 and, 100 and, 100 and something, 110 I think it is, amp hour battery. And I've never had any issues with that going flat. I've always fitted 110 hour battery, 110 amp hour battery, <laughs> never had any problems. And this bit of foam, now this bit of foam is my bit of foam that I cut off the mattress when I fitted the mattress and that's what I use to extend it to six foot if need be. Um, so far I've never done it, but there you go. <laughs> uh, there's, that's the tank for the diesel heater, for the nighttime heater, and I do use red diesel. I don't use road fuel in my diesel heater. It's, I mean, red diesel's half the price. So I burn road fuel and pay all the extra tax. I'll just take it up the top, show you my solar panel. There you go, little 100 watt solar panel, and it's a low profile, semi flexible solar panel, so it stays nice and low. People can't see it, the only thing they can see is the vent. But, um, yeah, it's as stealthy as it can be, really. <laughs> so, that's it. That's oh, there's a light there for night time when I'm jiggering around at night. I've got a little light there, folks, sort of poke around in the boat at night, and my high vis. That's for work. Where have I is. So that's it really, that's my van. So that's pretty much the van done. That's the van tour. Oh, I didn't show you in the front, did I? Hang on. So in the cab, um, 
apart from crap on the bed down on the chair. So the cab is pretty standard cab. All I've done is put some nice seat covers. These aren't. This isn't fitted. These are just seat covers. They're just cheap ones like you get in Argos or get them on eBay. And I've got a contrasting blue steering wheel as well. No fancy stereo. I mean, full standard Ford stereo works fine. It's got auxiliary, so I can plug my iPod into it. Yeah, it does me fine. Um, but I've kept it as standard as possible so it doesn't draw attention to it. The only thing that on the outside really is the wind deflectors which I spoke about earlier. They're the only non-standard thing on the outside and like I say I, c I can open the windows a little bit and uh, it, it just draws air in but it's just better ventilation. So that's it, that's the cab area. Um, that's pretty much the van really well i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you enjoyed looking around my van and if you are interested on how i built this van i'll put a link up there to a whole bunch of videos of me building this van out now if you are new to my channel please do consider subscribing i'll put a link down there now by subscribing to my channel you'll help the local wildlife because you'll be helping me feed a cat i've got two and they're both hungry thanks for watching ta for now